Welcome back to my channel. Uh, my name is Tammy Betendag. I'm the founder of The Sleep Company. And if you are new here, we are a company that does all things parenting, from setting healthy boundaries with our kids all the way through to attachment-based sleep training. Um, if you're new, please go and hit the like, subscribe, and the bell button. We really do appreciate that. So today's conversation that I want to have is about comparison in children. And this is a big one. I think to some extent, every single mother at some point falls into this trap. And that's the trap of, is my child measuring up? And I think the reason we fall into that kind of a trap is that we don't want our children to be disadvantaged in any way going forward through life. We want them to be the best that they possibly can be because possibly personally we've realized that we're in where we were in places where we lacked that kind of sometimes opens up a door for ridicule for uh, mocking for bullying um, for self-esteem issues and as a result it's, it's almost instinctual we don't want our children to have to go through that the problem comes in though is that often by having an even sometimes it's a hidden, a hidden level of expectation of the child. When we have that expectation, we're asking them to an extent not to be themselves. And that's a dangerous thing to almost fall into. And the last thing anyone wants or is healthy for any human being from child all the way through until adulthood is to be asked to be placed into a box. Because a box confines you, a box limits you, and a box tells you on a very subconscious level that who you are and how you are moving through this world isn't good enough. And the reason why we as parents especially start placing things into boxes, even our children, is because a box is something that the brain recognizes. Our brain functions off of structure and order. So I need to know that you are okay and how my brain recognizes that is by placing structure and order into the equation. Now what is structure and order? Things that are I can physically take note of and mentally compare to. Okay. So what we do is we naturally incline ourselves to do this, whether we will admit it or we don't admit it. We're in a restaurant and my child is acting out and another child isn't. Instantaneously, my brain tries to recognize the order and the structure. And my brain is saying, my kid is not like this kid. This kid seems to have better emotional regulation than my child. And this dynamic is constantly happening throughout our parenthood. And I don't think the dynamic necessarily is a wrong thing. It's something our brain does automatically. But what you need to do and what I hope this video shows you is that you need to create within yourself an awareness of when this initiates itself so that you don't allow yourself to fall into that trap. There is a beautiful quote that I once read that said, don't compare your child's weaknesses to another child's strengths. And this is such a beautiful quote, right? Because what this quote is saying is that each individual has a uniqueness. And what is unique in this child should never be compared to what is unique in this child because they differ. And a great example I can give you of this was when my son was about two years old. Um, we were during COVID and everything was on lockdown and we organized play dates at friends' houses so that the kids could just, I don't know, get out our house for a while. And the one day my husband came back and he's like, this friend of ours' husband said to her, to my husband, your Kai doesn't know his colors. You know, what, what daycare is he going to that he can't differentiate his different colors? And my husband was so worried. He like came home and he was like, Tammy, did you know that Kai doesn't know all his colors? He can't differentiate his colors. And I was like, yeah, I know. He doesn't care about that. Uh, but have you seen our son on a bicycle? Like our son at two years could ride a full on balanced bike without any effort. Okay, he jumped on and off he went. And I'm like, but what about their daughter? 
their daughter can't ride a balanced bike at all. And it's like what interests my son is very different from what interests her, their daughter. And does that make one of the children better or worse? No, it makes them unique. It makes them different. And that's a beautiful thing. Now, this often happens or this dynamic often happens in families and it can be very confusing and difficult to children that grow up in a family where their unique individual character traits are not um, encouraged. For instance, let's say we have a very uh, personality type, very organized, very structured, A-type mom, A-type dad. One of the kids is more or less along those guidelines and suddenly a, a younger child is born into the family that is creative. That creative child, if they are not allowed to be creative, will always feel suboptimal. They'll always feel as if they're not good enough, if they're doing something wrong. And that's, you don't want that for your child. And it is, it's really difficult for the A-type parent to create the space for the creative child to remain creative. But you want to appreciate the differences from yourself and from each child. Okay, we're all uniquely different. This also happens, I did a, um, uh, an interview or a discussion with Nicole Mayer, which you can go and have a look at, about body positivity. And she said what ignited body positivity in her or the journey that she walked on was the fact that she had a family where everyone was pretty much slender. And she came in very voluptuous, voluptuous boobs, voluptuous bottom. And the message she received from her family is that you have to conform to be more like us. But she couldn't. It wasn't in her genetics. It wasn't in the way her body was designed. And she grew up from a, as a small child being subconsciously told that you are not okay. And she gave herself as an adult permission to just be herself, even though it looked very different from the rest of her family. And the same goes with our children. We need to appreciate and understand that there are going to be physical differences, emotional differences, EQ, IQ differences in each unique human being. And that's a beautiful thing. If you just think about walking, for instance, there is a huge range of normal when it comes to walking. Some kids walk at eight months and some kids at only 18 months. That is basically a year difference. But all of that is considered normal when it comes to development in children. Now, if you had a one-year-old that wasn't walking, you might feel that your child, there's something wrong with your child. If your friend's child is already walking at eight months, there's nothing wrong with your child. Your child is different. Your child is probably doing a lot more internally in their brain. And that child is much more motivated and driven by external things. All of those unique differences are beautiful. If we think of physiological, how we look is uniquely different. Some are tall, some are short, some have frizzy hair, some have straight hair. And then the same with EQ and IQ. Some kids have incredibly high IQs um, and they are the, the, the way that their brain can process and um, sort information and think about certain concepts and problem solve is remarkable. But socially they might be lacking where some kids might struggle on the IQ side of things and might need a little bit more attention and a little bit more help working through schooling. But their EQ is on point and these kids are exceptionally aware of the emotional dynamic in the room, um, uh, other people's emotions, what they're feeling. They have higher levels of empathy. Now, all of that is beautiful and we need to appreciate our children as they are. I will end this off by saying... There are times, and I believe firmly in that mother instinct, where you will know something is not okay. I had this with my son where he hit the year mark and he still had not been saying a single word. And it was like, Ugh, I feel like by now he should at least be saying mama, dada, but he isn't. And that warning bell initiated a step for me to be like, let me go and see if something's wrong. Even if I'm going to take him to a specialist and the specialist says to me, listen, your kid is fine. Then I'm like, okay, cool. Then I can relax and be like, okay, my child is fine. But I went on that journey and I, then we did find out his ears were blocked. He couldn't hear and we had to drain his ears and put in grommets. So sometimes there are developmental delays that need to be addressed, but don't assume or don't, 
worry about that until you've seeked out the help of a professional. Even if all the professional says to you is listen, don't worry about it, your kid is fine because that will put your mind at ease. But be aware of this dynamic that we naturally are inclined to do and as far as you can, as far as possible, avoid that pop, that level of comparison between your children and other people's children and your own children with each other. I hope that you enjoyed this chat. Bye.